So let us begin on creating a Azure Databricks workspace in an Azure portal. So you can just search here for the Databricks. You can see you got an Azure Databricks. Just click on that. I already have one Databricks workspace with the name called NY Databricks. Let me create a new year. So let me click on this plus button and you need to select your subscription. So by default, I have a pay as you go subscription. So let me pick up that or in your case, it might be a free trial or it might be your Azure pass and so on. Now it will ask you for the resource group. So resource group is nothing but it's like a folder or you can just call it like a container where you are keeping all your resources. Suppose I am creating a or I'm working on a project where I'll be using few resources like ADF, then Databricks, then Synapse and so on. I'll keep all the resources in the same resource group. So I already have a resource group called as a project. You can keep it here or you can create a new by just clicking on this very simple and easy. Then it will ask you for the workspace name. So you can give any workspace name. So let me give NL why or let me write Databricks and why is my Databricks workspace name. So if it is available, then you will get this green tick here. It means that your workspace name is available and you are ready to go. Then it comes when it comes to selecting the region. So you can select East US region only because because if you are selecting some other region, there might be not an limited resources yet there. For example, you might be using Databricks SQL serverless feature or you might be using a Unity catalog. So they may not available in those regions. So you can use East US region only. Then coming to the pricing tire. So once you click on it, you get three options like standard premium are the two tires actually. So in standard, you do not get a Unity catalog feature and you do not get a serverless SQL that is Databricks SQL. And also there is a feature for data orchestration that is Delta Live table. Delta Live tables are also not available in this standard tire. So you can go to for the premium. So we'll talk about the pricing uh, when it comes to standard and premium. But if you have a new account, you can go for trial. So I strongly recommend you go for the trial because you will get to know how the pricing and everything works. So go for the trial that comes with the premium account only and you are getting 14 days free DBU. DBU stands for Databricks units. So I request if you are using a new account, you go for the free trial only. Then manage resource group. So it is not mandatory. You can just skip it. Let me go to the next networking. I'll just keep it by default. Encryption, I'll keep it default. Tax also, I'll not give anything for now. Let me click on review plus create. So it will take few seconds to validate. After the validation is done, then you can click on create to create a new Databricks workspace with a name called Databricks NY. So it may take one or two minutes and once everything is valid, then it will show you the status of deployment as success. Yeah, you can see here, I got a notification that your deployment has been succeeded. You can see under the project as a resource group and the name of the resource is Databricks NY. So you can just go to your Azure Databricks. I already have a two workspace here, two workspaces with NY Databricks as one workspace. And just now we created a Databricks NY as the new Databricks workspace. Let me click on it. So you can get inside this by just clicking on this launch workspace or you can click on this URL also. Both will take you to the new Databricks workspace here. You can see here, you got a new link and it will ask you for the sign in. So you can just pass on your credentials of your Azure and then you are good to go. Let me pass on my details here.
yeah, we are at the onboarding page now. You can see once you get inside a Databricks, Azure Databricks, you get this onboarding page. Now, uh, first is you can it asks you to start a SQL warehouse. Maybe we will do that later on. Then you can explore some sample projects which are there within their Azure Databricks, or you can bring your own data here. So we will be walking through all this one by one. Now you can look at the new UI. This is a completely new UI. So if you compare it with your community edition or if you compare it with the old UI where we used to change the environment from data engineering to data science uh, or machine learning to Databricks SQL. But now they have done a pretty good job where you get only one UI for everything or you can call this a sidebar for all the data people. You can work together. So when it comes to workspace for all these people for machine learning for data engineering for SQL you have only one workspace so you can click on this workspace and you can see and the repos is also moved inside now this repository option or the feature is used to connect it to your git it may be your azure devops or it may be your github or so on maybe we'll do that then when you come to your workspace you can see you get a users and shared once you click on the users, I'll be having my email address only. Suppose if I add some of you to my Azure Active Directory and you can use my Databricks workspace also, we will be doing that. Now, moving forward, we have a catalog feature actually here. So it was a data plane, but data now they have replaced it to a catalog. So what is catalog in a simple terms? I can just say that catalog is at a uh, top level sorry it is a uh, within the catalogs you have the databases or the schemas within that you have the objects of the schemas so databricks prefer using three level namespace starting with the catalog at the top level then the databases then the objects within the databases we will walk through it in detail about that then come coming to a compute so again this is a completely new ui here where you have a all-purpose compute you have a job compute, you have a SQL warehouse also, and then you can create a pools and the policies. All the options like SQL warehouse were uh, somewhere in the SQL tab, but now they have moved it to compute where we can create a serverless SQL warehouses. We will talk about that. Now talking about the cluster, we have basically two types of clusters in Databricks. One is all purpose cluster and the job compute. So all purpose compute or cluster is used for interactive cluster is also called as an interactive clusters. It is specially used for development. Suppose if there are two, three developers working together, they can use the all purpose cluster. And if you are running a pipeline and if you are in the production environment, job compute is generally preferred and the costing as compared to the all purpose job compute is very less. Uh, depending on the workload and depending upon the resources also. But the basic understanding is in the job cluster, after the job, after the pipeline execute and after the task is completed, automatically the cluster will terminate. But whereas in all purpose cluster, it is not terminate. You have to set up a auto termination time or you have to pause it by your own. So that is the basic difference between all purpose and the job compute. Yeah, so before we go and start creating a cluster, I would like to take a minute to explain the how Databricks pricing works. So if you remember, I told you about the architecture of Databricks, how the Databricks architecture works. So one is we have a data plane or and the second is you have a control plane that is your Databricks account and your cloud account. So what is happening here is your cloud is providing you the virtual machines and your Databricks is giving you a software. So they are charging for these two, like the virtual machines that you are using from the cloud provider. In our case, it is an Azure and for the compute or for the software that you are using from the Databricks. So now if you just scroll uh, on this page, like Databricks, Azure Databricks pricing, just let us explore a few things here. Workload, so for all purpose cluster, or you can see the job compute is there. And Databricks have uh, like developed one photon engine that will see, speed up your queries. So that is written in C++. So if you want to speed up your queries and save some time, you can use the 
cluster with photon the pricing is obviously very high when it comes to the photon engine but we'll talk about that later on so you can see there are job compute and again sql compute delta life tables there is a completely different uh, cluster that is created when you start working on the delta life table and so on and now we are in the premium tire and in the east us region you can keep it hourly or the monthly uh, display for pricing and what all you get with the all purpose cluster and what you get with the job compute you can see interactive cluster that is what i am trying to explain rest everything is same and you can just explore a few things on this on delta live tables and so on if you scroll down here you can see for all purpose compute it is costing you around 33.3 rupees i'm talking about rupees you can if you want you can change it to dollars also that is per dbu hour per dbu hour so how does this dbu can be calculated so once we start with the cluster side i'll explain you that and the job compute you can just imagine the price is almost half we are talking about the standard tire but we have already took up a premium tire so our costing will be based on this so 45 uh, per dbu hour and job compute is approximately half of that so it is around 25 dbu per hour so you can just imagine how useful your job compute would be and moving to the databricks uh, delta life tables we will come to that point later on so you have uh, if you want to purchase the units in uh, bulk you can see 25000 dbus will cost you this much and so on with a discounted price so i will be providing you the link for this you can explore more on this now moving forward let me start creating a compute let me click on it and now you get this new ui that is not available in the community edition obviously in community edition we have only one driver but here we can do lot of things here so when you get an option here called single node and multi node so if you switch to the single node i want everyone to keep a eye on this summary here you can see this summary here now by default you have one driver and it is showing you 2 to 8 workers so it is by default auto scaling so auto scaling feature is here you can see it here so if i disable this you get you get maximum workers that is 8 so maybe that is not an optimal solution uh, using all 8 workers continuously running for your workload so you can always use an enable auto scaling so you will be charged continuously for one driver and two workers which have a resources like 14 gb memory and four cores in it so you will be charging anyway minimum 4 dbu per hour so imagine 4 dbu per hour so uh, 1 dbu is charging 45 rupees as i have told you you can just do that rough calculations and but it is an photon acceleration here or photon engine so you can just disable this so this will speed up your queries but now i don't need that you can just disable this and the moment you disable you can see the pricing it is almost half so now it is 2 dbu per hour if it is multi node but if you are working with a sample or a very small data set you can switch it to a single node so what does single node means if you remember spark help you to work on the single node also and multi node also so if you switch to the single node you will be working with only one driver there has no workers here you can see one driver with four cores and the costing would be 1.5 dbu per hour if you remove the photon and it may cost you around 0.75 dbu per hour now you can just see few options here one is node type so if you want more cores yes you can get it like 28 cores with 28 gb 16 cores with 56 gb memory and so on you can change it the general purpose node type also for the driver but let me keep it simple 14 gb and 4 cores and the next is very important that is terminate after so if you are not using your cluster if you are not running any uh, workload or any cells on that any notebooks on that it should automatically terminate after 20 minutes minimum you can keep it as 10 you can see minimum you can keep it as 10 minimum 10 maximum 10000 minutes so let us keep it at 20 or 30 minutes that might be an ideal time if your uh, cluster is not active automatically it will terminate so you need to mention it that then moving forward 
So you can take a multi node. Okay, let me switch it to multi node and show you how the things looks like. Here, if you want, you can change the again worker type. So if you want, you can move it to 28 GB with eight cores. So how much data you are going to process? Like depending upon that, you need to calculate and set up your worker node, set up your cluster configurations. And how many workers do you need? Suppose minimum I need one and maximum I need four. So you will be charged from one to four. So just imagine when you are taking one minimum worker, so you will have one driver and one worker. So you can just calculate it like 14 plus 14, you will have 28 GB memory and four plus four, you will have eight cores that are always available for you. So then depending upon the size of the data you are going to process, you need to select the cluster size and yes, that's all for the multi node and the single node options. So let me switch it to the single node here. Let me remove the photon and you can see you, they're asking you the access mode. So if you want to you uh, like set up this cluster for others to use it, like you can go for the shared where you can use only Python and SQL, or you can go for no isolation shared where you can use all the languages. You can choose this also for the cluster. So let me keep it as a single user because I am the only user I'll be using it. Or if there is a group of people uh, in my organization, those who are working on the same workspace, I can select their names here and then I can give them permission to use it. When I move it to the isolation shared, uh, all the users can be used. When I use as a single user, I can select the user uh, for whom I want to give a permission to. Now, uh, we have some advanced options. Maybe we'll talk about that later on. Now everything is fine now. So if you are doing it, if you have a free trial account from the Azure side, you can just go for the multi node in multi node. You can go for minimum one, maximum two worker nodes without any photon. You can do it in this way. So you will keep your cluster configuration with a minimum and the costing would also not be impacted. But if you are using it uh, as a pay as you go model and for only practicing purpose or working on a very small data set, I recommend to use a single node cluster. So let me create this cluster by using a single node. Let me click on create a compute and just try to understand guys so we are using these four cores like who is going to provide these four cores your azure is going to provide you these four cores and you will be charged for that okay so you are uh, whatever the virtual machines you are using from the cloud azure that is charged separately and the software charge that is for the databricks we picked up as a free trial so maybe you won't be getting charged for that but yes, if after the 14 days, if you switch it to the upgrade your account, then you will be getting charged for that also. And don't worry if you are, uh, you created a cluster for the single node. And if you wish to change it to a multi node, do not worry. You can, once your cluster is created, you can edit that cluster easily. You can just go here and you get an option to edit. So you can just edit it and you can make it as a multi node also. So let us wait for a few minutes. Let your cluster start. Yeah, so your cluster is up and running now, guys. You can see I got this green tick. So it took some time, but yes, your cluster is running now.